We recently got this phone in the office and are currently running it through all the benchmarks. It's the Honor 200 Pro and it caught me a bit by surprise. It has a Snapdragon 8 S Gen 3 inside it. We're about to find out how it compares uh, next to other recent Snapdragon flagships and why not an Apple A17 Pro, right? When I heard the name, I was like, wait, is this a Snapdragon Plus or something? You know, the S moniker. But no, it turns out it's kind of a cheaper variant of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 that's meant to go into, you know, high performing phones that cost less. So it can be clocked up to 3 GHz as opposed to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, which can technically go up to 3.4 according to the specs. And the new 8S Gen 3 has the Adreno 735 GPU, which is actually a bit slower than the Adreno 740 in the Snapdragon from last year, from 2023. But it still has hardware accelerated ray tracing. So the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8S Gen 3 is maybe meant to go in these more obscure gaming phones that don't cost an arm and a leg, but still perform quite well for gamers. So first things first, of course we're gonna do some standard benchmarks here. Our go-to is the 3 d Mark Wildlife Extreme Stress Test. This benchmark runs in 20 loops and is designed to push the phone to heat up and throttle and then gives you a report of how well the phone did at its best loop and how bad it fell for the worst loop. Now these are all different phones with different thermals so it's not exactly fair to compare it like this but we can take a look at the best scores here because they tell us how the Snapdragons inside do at optimal conditions before they heat up. So looking at these scores we can start actually getting an idea. The Snapdragon 8S Gen 3 is definitely the worst performer here. Then we have the actually the Apple A17 Pro, believe it or not. And then we have the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 inside an ROG phone, which is very well optimized. And then a Galaxy S24 Ultra, which has the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 made for Galaxy, also a bit optimized. Crazy score here, right? So this 2900 score may look a bit low, but at least I can assure you that it's higher than a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, which typically gets around 2200 points on these tests. So basically the new silicon here sits between Gen 1 of 2022 and Gen 2 of 2023. Okay, this was mostly a graphical comparison, let's check out Geekbench for some CPU frying tests. Again, let's sort these by rating. Uh, we care about multi-core score more. The iPhone actually did better here, actually did best. Here's our rating, the Snapdragon 8S Gen 3, the 8 Gen 2, then the 8 Gen 3, and the top dog is the iPhone's Apple A17 Pro. Again, this score is not perfect, um, this is basically a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 Plus Plus Ultra or something like that. Definitely not as powerful as last year's flagship or nowhere near this year's flagship. But life is not about benchmarks. Life is about downloading the latest FPS and popping some heads with incredibly smooth frame rates. Let's see how these games treat the Snapdragon 8S Gen 3. Alright, so this is Arena Breakout, relatively new, hot FPS. By default we have the graphics at HD, super high refresh, whatever that means. Now these third-party FPS counters you get from the Play Store are not exactly accurate, but this does feel like 60 FPS. And if I go into graphics, set it to 90, we can see that it goes up to 90 here. And it's pretty smooth. Pretty, pretty smooth. Look around, there's some shadows going on. No, and the graphical fidelity is not fantastic. So let's go to Ultra HD. Right. Pretty good. Uh, the only thing I can say is that I do feel a little bit of input lag, which, uh, you know, if you've been spoiled by the ROG phones and the iPhones, you will also notice. But just a quick look at how the other phones perform here. Here's the ROG, let's go for Ultra HD with 120 FPS. 
Now Asus has this uh, stock counter thingy, which is much better at actually giving you real-time information and it just keeps the 120 going. It looks a bit smoother and the touch response is of course much better. This is the Galaxy S24 Ultra, of course with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 made for Galaxy. Oh and wow, it's, it's super snappy. This is actually very good. And this is the iPhone 15 Pro Max because why not? Now it's pretty hard to find FPS counters for the iPhone that actually work well. I'm gonna try without one first. And this doesn't really look like complete 120 FPS to my eyes. Maybe it's between 90 and 120, but the touch resp response is pretty quick. So it's definitely good for gaming. Let me try to activate an FPS counter. Now this one says 60, but since I opened the picture in picture thing, the FPS of the phone dropped by a little, so I can't really give you a good reporting of how this performs due to the picture-in-picture -picture window. And of course, Call of Duty Warzone is a hot new title. We have to check how that runs, right? Now, this game handles settings a bit differently. When you go into graphics, Typically you have it set for temperature and battery, but let's just go all out. Go custom, go visual quality higher and uncapped frame rates and why not 120 FOV. You know, not bad at all. It's definitely not 120 FPS, but this is very playable. And for comparison, here's how it runs on the Galaxy S24 Ultra with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. This feels smoother, I gotta say. Uh, it still doesn't look like 120fps, but again, the touch response is better. But of course, of course, this is down to the actual phone and not the um, SoC inside it. Okay, this is the ROG phone. Um, I want to check this out because it has the Asus FPS counter down the bottom, which says 30 FPS right now. So let's go into the settings, graphics, custom, uncapped, all the way on the field of view. Let's see what the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 can do. 70 FPS. So yeah, on neither of these phones did it feel like I was getting 120, but the Touch response was the important one and the graphical fidelity, right? Well, there you have it. Now, this particular phone is definitely not meant to be your go-to smartphone for gaming specifically, because look at it, it's sleeker. It's like a daily driver, an accessory. But the Snapdragon 8S Gen 3 inside it has the chops. It lags behind in raw benchmark numbers by about two years but it has all the newest features like ray tracing, Vulkan 1.3, Wi-Fi 7 and other specs sprinkled throughout. My point is, in 2024 maybe it will be better to look for those gaming phones that have the Snapdragon 8S Gen 3 instead of hunting out an older unit with Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Of course, if such do come out, I have a feeling they will. Because I guess this is why Qualcomm made this chip so its partners can keep churning out well-balanced phones with good performance, good price. Well, that was a quick look of the Snapdragon 8S Gen 3. If you didn't know, now you know. Bye!